What's going on guys? Justin McRae. Um, to show y'all how to put in some fence posts the right way. Uh, no concrete, just tamp dirt, a little bit of sand, some gravel at the bottom. Be sure to make your fence posts last for a very long time. And I'll just show you a few tips, how to get it done, and how to have a nice looking fence at the end of the day. All right, so step number one is dig your hole. If you're doing a four by four, you want an eight inch hole, um, eight inch diameter hole. You want to tamp the bottom, clean it out, clean all the dirt out, make sure the bottom is nice and hard packed. Uh, we then use a little bit of pea gravel, about two to three inches worth, tamp it down. It won't feel like you're really making progress when you're tamping the gravel. It'll kind of just keep moving around, but tamping anyways. Once you got the gravel down, you'll go ahead and set your post square in the hole. If you're using square post, put post to round post, you'll want to make sure that your flat sides of the posts are perpendicular to your fence line in both directions. And then you'll put up a couple braces to hold it while you initially set your posts. And uh, before long, when you tamp it nicely, the post is gonna be really secure. You're not gonna have to worry about it moving around if you do it the right way. Uh, this saves a headache of concrete. The reason we don't use concrete for fence posts is a few reasons. Number one, it can be a little expensive if you use uh, like a rapid set concrete so you don't have to sit around and wait forever. You gotta mix it, you gotta deal with mixing concrete and pouring it in a post. Concrete by nature is super porous, so it's gonna absorb water, hold water, eventually let water out, but if you live in a, a really wet climate or a climate that has a really wet season, then that concrete's gonna stay full of moisture, which is going to impact the wood. It's obviously gonna be up touching the wood. Um, so that's not good. The wood will eventually over time start to decay. Um, it's not going to fall apart tomorrow or probably in three years, but if you're planning to have a fence that's going to last for a really long time, you should avoid concrete. If you have a lot of fence posts to drive, then I would recommend getting the fence posts pounded into the dirt with a bobcat or somebody who has a fence post driver um, for this small project here we're just using post hole diggers I do have a PhD in post hole digging um, so we'll dig it down tamp it all around and then just use the first six inches or so around the post I use sand and with the sand I'll pour in about two inches a little bit of water, tamp it down nice, another two inches, a little bit of water, tamp it down nice, another two inches, a little bit of water, tamp it down nice. What that does is make a really tight layer of sand that will continue to compact over time. And when you keep packing the hole up with the rest of your clay or your dirt that you have in your area, it'll keep pressing that sand down. So once we have the sand in, We'll then use our dirt that we dig out of the hole, try to chop it up a little bit with a, a spade shovel before we put it back in. Tamp it in about six inch or so sections. You'll hear a nice good thud when you have it tamped good. And once you hear a good thud, go ahead and tamp it some more. Um, I do find that if you tamp these properly, you usually end up using all of the dirt you take out of the hole, even though you're putting a post in the hole. So. That's one good way to see if you got it tamped good enough. Another reason we use a little bit of sand, or usually we would come up short with the dirt. So it is a pretty uh, laborious process, and uh, but you do it once, you do it right, you never have to do it again. Um, so we'll go ahead and set this post, square it up, start the tamping process, and then I'll show you the one key tip that you must do for all of your corner posts if you want them to stay true, stay straight, and withstand the forces when you start stretching your fence. Um, it's a super key step, so make sure to stick around for that. All right, so to tamp the gravel, the dirt, I just got this piece of DOM tube. It's pretty heavy, quarter wall, 
inch and a half tube, so it's got some heft to it. And I went ahead and welded a little square 3 8 steel plate to the bottom so it leaves a nice flat surface to tamp. Easy to work around a 4x4 four four post in an 8 inch hole. Um, and it, it tamps the dirt really nice. So I just am going to throw some gravel in here, tamp the gravel right quick, and then we'll go ahead and set the post. I've already got gravel in the hole, but uh, so usually you put a little bit more than that in there, but there's already some gravel in. So we just go ahead and tamp this hole. This is three foot deep. It's actually 40 inches deep. And I use, when I use four inches or so of gravel, you'll bring it up so you still have a three foot deep hole for your posts. Again, this feels like you're really not doing too much. Just kind of moving the gravel around but it does compact them. So I'm not hitting these too hard. You just want to kind of try to flatten this bottom surface out, make it nice and level in there. And that's it. So that will keep the bottom of your post from sitting in water when uh, either the water comes up from the hole, you get a bunch of rain, your soil holds water. Whatever the case may be, it helps the water drain out of the hole, keep it away from the post. All right, so we got our post set down here in the hole. Pretty much centered all the way around. Does not have to be perfect. Um, we got it leveled up. Here with two two by four braces. I tend to use angle iron with a few holes in them to support it opposed to wood stakes. They're way easier to drive. You don't have to worry about ruining the hole on that stake every time. Um, so if you just pop a hole in your angle iron, run it in your board. And another good tip for setting these posts and getting them square and level is if you preload your pole, your post, on the facing basically on the outside of the fence. So if you were to have it lean towards us right now, where the fence is gonna be on the inside, then whenever you go set your two by fours, set your stakes, drag them out, go ahead and screw everything in, and you'll wanna lodge your two by fours down here in the grass a little bit. So then you would take your level, and to level it, you can essentially push the pole back the opposite way it was preloaded and that'll cause, you can see how I did it here on this stake, how the stake is leaning. And so there's enough tension on those stakes if you drive them far enough that when you push them to lean, they will stay lean and keep your pole level opposed to trying to fight, leveling the pole perfectly, holding the level, screwing a two by four, and then checking again. So I just screw everything in off level, leaning out of the fence, and then push it back in. And that helps uh, really speed the process up. And you can tweak it a little bit that way. Um, but again, one of the key components with doing a, a square post fence is making sure your flat surface of your fence, fence post is perpendicular with the run in both directions that you're gonna be going. Now this is the second post we're setting today. Um, so that first post down at the end was 83 and 3 eighths off the shop building. When we set fence, not doing fine furniture, um, so we're not working with the 16ths of an inch. This post is a half inch closer to the building over the course of 30 feet. I'm completely happy with that. My tomatoes aren't going to care. The deer won't jump the fence because of it. Um, so we're letting it ride, set it in there. And now we're gonna go ahead and put some sand in, tamp the sand with a little bit of water, tamp the sand with a little bit of water, then backfill it with the clay. And then uh, we'll show you that one key step I was talking about that's gonna keep this corner post from rocking ever, especially when you're pulling the fence tight. bit 
of water, not too much. Just kind of splash it in. This seems counterproductive that you're pouring water on your post, but oh, but it does work. So now we'll take this tamper. And you're gonna to wanna to listen for the sound to feel and sound dead. When it sounds dead and it doesn't sound like you're still pushing air out, then you're pretty well tamped. This tamper, like I said, it's got a lot of weight to it. So on these low sections, when it's hard to really push the force on it, the weight of the tamper itself compacts it. If you don't have a welder, if you don't have a little tamper tool, you can buy some black pipe from Home Depot, Lowe's, get an end cap for it, screw the end cap on. Make sure you get a pipe sized right that you can slide it around the side and you can even pack it full of sand and put a cap on the other side so you got a little bit of weight. If you want to get really fancy, you can use a T handle at the top so you got a little tamper handles. But uh, out here, we're using what we got and this, this pole right here works fantastic. But you can already hear that sound. It's a good, that's a good sound right there. That's the sound of a post that's not going to move. So sometimes, depending on the hole, it may be a little hard and your tamper might have to make its own room. So after we get this first section tamped, we'll check the level. Um, and then we'll keep on rocking, pour some more sand, more water, keep on going. This first six inches or so is the most important area to have tamped nice and tight. It's essentially the base for your post. Uh, so if there's slop here, then the rest of the fill you put in on top may or may not tighten the slop as you tamp it. Um, so you really want to start with a nice solid foundation. And that's why we work in small increments of either sand or dirt or whatever you're going to use, lime, limestone. Um, to push this in so we're not trapping big air pockets or leaving loose areas. All right, so we got two tamped sections of sand in the bottom with some water. Uh, so now we're gonna move on to the dirt and then we'll tamp it about with this particular corner post, we're gonna to wanna to stop about eight inches from the top of the, the ground level of the soil. And that'll help us get our next super important tip, trick, must do, necessity for all fences installed properly. So we're gonna go ahead and fill the dirt in, mix it up a little bit with the spade shovel, break up big clumps, tamp, 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 tamp a little bit more, tamp a little bit more, fill a little more dirt in, tamp a little more, fill a little dirt, tamp a little more. And then the trick. So here we go.
All right, now we're up to the key trick, the one you don't want to miss. We're eight inches from the top of the surface. So now we're gonna pour it full of concrete. Just kidding, no we're not. We're gonna put these two by fours in here, these treated two by fours. We're gonna key them in to the posts in the directions the post is gonna be pulled for the fence. So with that, while we stop eight inches from the top, this two two by fours equals seven inches. So that'll leave us a little room to uh, tamp some dirt back on top of the last two by four. So you don't want to dig your hole completely in line with a flat two by four because then it's just going to drop in. We want to put a little pressure. So turn the two by four up on a side. Just kind of scribe you a line in just like that. Now we'll dig that line out all the way down to the bottom to where we're tamped at about eight inches. We'll hammer the two by four in there and do the same thing on the other end and then tie it into the post with a couple screws. Um, you don't have to use screws, you can use nails or just let them be as they are. But we'll go ahead and dig this out. And I like to use a spade shovel. Dig on the edge of your crease, straight down on both sides, make a little wedge. And then I take the back of standard framing hammer with the claw and claw my dirt out. So we'll go ahead and dig this hole. Take the hammer and just try to dig some of this out. You want to try to not disturb too much of the earth around where you're putting it in so you don't just have a whole loose bunch of dirt. And uh, we'll drop this two by four in here. So the first two by four, and then we'll put another one coming across in this direction. And that'll keep the fence from being pulled or the post from being pulled either time when we pull the fence or stretch the fence out. So we'll go ahead and dig that next. So now we got both keys in. There are uh, two screws into the four by four and then one toenail screw into the two by below it so this is going to keep the forces when you're pulling the fence this way on this two by four spread the surface area spread the load and then same thing when we're pulling this way on the lower two by four is going to spread the load so i mean this post is about as solid as it gets and we still got six inches to tamp up around it that's why the bottom is the most crucial step for tamping 
because the the bottom's going to give you this rigidity. Uh, if the bottom's loose and the the lower part of the post can kick out or wobble in the hole, it's not going to do too well. Um, so we're going to finish tamping this up, and then uh, post setting will be done for this one and then I have a whole lot of more posts to drive um, we only have to do the the key method on corner posts you don't need to do them on the posts that are just between your corners unless you want to or if you're gonna you know divide your fence up into quarters or half and you're gonna be pulling on one of those center posts inward then you'd want to put a key on the inward side but that little tip right there is gonna make your corners last forever. All right, guys. We got this post done a while ago, but just, just finishing it up. So we got it all the way tamped in with both keys. One going this way, one going that way. Um, got it all nice and tamped. And then you mound the dirt away a little bit just to help keep water off the post. Um, and then you can come back in with this mound later and continue to tamp it around. As the dirt dries out, just it gives you a little bit of material to work with. Uh, but this post is extremely solid. It's not going anywhere. Um, so that was a post well done. We got a few left to do, but looks good. Here's another tip for setting your fence post. Sometimes you're gonna find when you dig down three feet, which is what I recommend, it's a good safe distance and it's about as far as your standard post hole digger can open when it's three feet in the ground. Um, unless you make your hole bigger, then you can open it up wider. But nonetheless, so if we're talking about a three foot hole, here on my property, about two and a half foot down will hit the water column. And so that means the hole is going to start filling back up with water and it can turn into a really sloppy mess. Um, in this case, since we're just building a garden fence and it's not keeping in bulls or anything else for that matter, we can go ahead and set the posts with it being in the water column in a pretty traditional way. So what you're going to want to do is dig your hole get all the dirt out of it with the post hole diggers, and then the water, you're gonna see the water rise up. It may take 30 seconds, it may take 15, 20 minutes, or an hour. Um, what I usually do is let it come up to about its finished level of what it's gonna rise. Once it's, uh, once it's risen up, then I'll go ahead and throw in the dirt that I took out of the hole and kind of mix it around. This basically helps the dirt soak up the moisture. Now, what that's going to do is make it so you don't have to sit there with a, a bucket like, uh, you know, like in a, whatever that movie is where the puts the lotion on the skin. We're not going to have to drop the bucket down and pull the water out. So we'll let the, the mud soak up the dirt and they'll take the post hole diggers and remove the mud again. And that's gonna take out most of the water. It's gonna make a sloppy mess. And then the key here is to work really quick. So go ahead and throw your gravel in there when the hole is essentially empty. You're gonna put your gravel in. I like to go a little bit more gravel if we're in the water column. So six to eight inches of gravel drop your post, tamp your, tamp your post down in the gravel, and then once your post is tamped in the gravel, before you set up any of your two bys to brace the piece, take some sand and pour sand all the way around the post and go up a good little ways. I'd say six inches of sand untamped. Now what that's gonna do is hold your post in, and theoretically it's gonna dam your water column from coming back up and around the posts which is gonna make it impossible to backfill properly. So you're gonna have your sand in, the untamped gravel bed, then you can go ahead and set your two by supports to get everything nice and leveled out. Once that's done, go ahead and tamp that first layer of sand, tamp it really, really, really good because you're gonna have water coming up. 
So you're not going to need to pour water on your sand this time. You're going to use the water in the hole. And you can tamp it really good. You'll hear it. You'll hear it mixing with the water. And what that's going to do is keep the water from continuing to rise around your fence post so you can then progress on and continue to backfill the hole. When it's uh, a hole that is in the water column, I typically use almost all sand to backfill around the post. Um, the clay or whatever you might, whatever type of dirt you might have, usually it's used up from soaking the water up and throwing it out. Um, so you can save a little bit of the clay to fill the last four to six inches around after you go ahead and key your corner posts in and uh, that should get you a good solid post if you happen to encounter your groundwater. Um, so that's, that's how we do it and uh, works out great. See you next time.